Hello everyone and welcome to a truly spectacular game from the elimination round of the American Cup. It's Wesley So versus Levon Aronian and uh, so many of you guys have requested this again for very good reasons. It's um, uh, one of those games where you really have no idea what a piece is worth because when you're a child that they will teach you like a pawn is worth one, maybe a knight is worth three, bishop is worth three. Okay, maybe in modern times we're gonna give bishop a value of maybe three and a third just because it's supposed to be a little bit better than a knight uh, but then again you've seen positions where a bishop completely dominates a knight and you've seen positions where a knight completely dominates a bishop then we're going to attribute let's say five points to a rook we're going to attribute 10 points to a queen or in modern times maybe nine and a half as two rooks should be better than a queen but then again you've seen positions where two rooks completely dominate a queen and you've seen positions where a queen completely dominates a rook and here by move 30 we're going to have three queens on the board uh, which uh, kind of means that, uh, okay, the player that has two queens obviously wins the game easily. Uh, but this is just another game that shows you how amazing chess is and why uh, we have been so infatuated with the game for, for so many centuries. And if you are wondering why Medo is not present in this video, uh, there is a fish being cooked downstairs and he refuses to leave the, the fish alone. So he just sits there and, uh, you know, he, he enjoys the, the, I guess, the smell and the sound of the fish. Uh, in case you were wondering. Now, getting back to the game, uh, Wesley has the white pieces, and again, we're going to have a very, very exciting Nimzo Indian defense. So d4, uh, knight to f6, c4, e6, knight to c3, and bishop to b4. Levon goes for the Nimzo Indian defense, and here Wesley tackles it with e3. So the standard uh, and modern approach, uh, we always mention that queen c2 and e3 are the most popular replies white has nowadays. Uh, castles, and now bishop to d2. This is somewhat rarer, but again, I it has been played many times. Uh, you don't uh, play something like queen to c2. Uh, so when black finally captures on c3, you don't have to uh, mess up your pawn structure, but you will not be capturing with the queen. You will be capturing with the bishop and you will have your bishop on a very nice diagonal. So here c5, uh, we have a3 now challenging the bishop and the bishop captures on c3. Uh, bishop captures and now knight to e4 uh, challenging the bishop on c3. And also this is a beautiful square for the knight. If white wants to kick it away, uh, he's going to have to play something like knight e2, knight g3, or maybe even f3 in the future. But we're going to have a beautiful knight on e4. We're going to play b6, bishop to b7, put a bishop on this diagonal, play f5, uh, consolidate even further. And those are some general ideas. So here, Wesley goes knight to e2. This is the uh, standard way. b6, preparing to uh, fianchetto the bishop. And now Wesley says, all right, d5. You are not getting this diagonal for your bishop. Uh, we have d6 by Levon. And now uh, f3 and queen to c2 are moves that have been played in this position challenging the knight here but Wesley plays rook to c1 and it is now as of move 10 that we have a completely new game uh, so what does Levon do he plays e5 and uh, already you can see that uh, it will be somewhat problematic to develop this bishop uh, you can't really put it on b7 anymore on, uh, on a6 okay it, it might serve some purpose but uh, it, it's very hard to uh, to, to imagine it actually going there. Uh, so we'll see what Levon comes up with. We have knight to g3, uh, challenging the knight here, and now knight captures on c3. We have rook captures, so Wesley doesn't have to mess up his pawn structure, and now the bishop and the rook will support the advancement of the f pawn. So pawn to f5, and now bishop to d3. Uh, asking Levon, is he interested in advancing the pawn even further? Levon says, yes, that is exactly what I'm interested in. Bishop to c2, and now look at this beautiful e5 square. It's uh, a spectacular knight uh, <laughs> outpost for our knight. Uh, so knight to d7. The knight is now coming to e5, and white will have uh, some problems dislodging it from there. So here we have castles by Wesley, and knight to e5. And here... Uh, what do you play? Well, best, uh, Wesley goes for a uh, pawn to b4. Uh, it's not a not a, a bad move, uh, but uh, Black's position is just better. So uh, no, no move that White can make here will make his position better. So uh, why not b4? Uh, and here, okay, you could consider something like bishop to a6. Levon went for, for the immediate rook to f6. But here, bishop to a6 uh, might uh, actually not be a, a bad idea. We force White to advance the pawn, and then we bring the bishop back. We completely close the queen side. The, the center is closed and now we completely shift our attention uh, towards the king side to attack with the moves like queen h4, rook f6, rook h6, f4 uh, and so on. Uh, but okay, uh, we have to keep in mind this is a rapid game, rook to f6, and now Wesley says, all right, I don't really have a way of uh, entangling here, uh, let's just go uh, and play f4. 
so what do you do here? Uh, if you go knight g4, h3, and you really don't have any good squares for this knight. So Levon just captures this en passant. Uh, we have e captures on f3, g captures on f3, of course, as the knight is guarding the f3 square. And now Wesley uh, has a bit more room to breathe, but he opened his king a little bit. So f4, Levon wants to further open up the position, plus he opens up this diagonal for his light square bishop. Knight to h5 attacking the rook, and now comes the immediate bishop to h3. And this is probably not a square you had in mind when uh, the, this diagonal got closed where the, the uh, black's light square bishop will be developed. Uh, and here, uh, Wesley plays e captures on f4. Now, it's a very, very uh, crazy position. So I'm just going to show you how crazy it really is because the only good move for Wesley is to, uh, is to capture the rook on f6 with check. Queen captures, now e captures on f4, challenging the knight. And after bishop captures on f1, we play f captures on e5. Queen captures on e5, and now we have to, uh, of course, our rook here is hanging, so we don't have time to pick up the bishop. But what we can play is give up our bishop, and after king h7, queen captures on f1. Uh, complete madness, of course, for a rapid game, you don't have time to calculate this. Uh, and now, of course, you can see that the rook is hanging, but if the rook is captured, then Wesley can get a very nice draw. King g8, queen to e6, check, and you will always be able to check the uh, black king... Uh, uh, along this diagonal and of course if he goes to f8 then you're going to capture this if he goes further uh, uh, to, uh, to the queen side then you're going to deliver check pick up the rook and then it's white who, who's going to be better so instead after a uh, bishop to h3 west played e captures on f4 which is a move that uh, definitely uh, is a part of this uh, line however not in this particular order uh, and levon now uh uh, plays rook to h6. He puts pressure on the knight here, and we have f captures on e5, and now Levon plays bishop captures on f1. Rook captures on h5 was a little bit better, uh, as it keeps all the pressure. The queen is coming to g5, the other rook is coming to f8. Uh, with bishop captures on f1, he allows Wesley to get back into the game. Uh, he, uh, Wesley plays knight g3, goes after the bishop, save his, saves his knight from h5, bishop to h3, and now e6. And here, okay, it uh, almost looks like Levon is the one who's in trouble because Wesley now has a, a protected pass pawn on e6. Uh, but okay, queen to g5, we get our queen into the attack, b captures on c5, b captures on c5, and now queen to e1. Uh, preparing to further advance the pawn. So Levon plays rook to f8, uh, and now uh, Wesley finds the beautiful f4. Uh, the idea being that if, for example, queen captures, then you play e7, and the queen no longer uh, has any uh, pressure on this uh, e7 pawn, because if it did, you would play rook e8, and then you would already have a queen and the rook attacking the pawn. But now after rook e8, bishop to a4 attacks the rook on e8, uh, it's not going to be easy for black. So instead, we have queen to h4, uh, leaving that pawn B, uh, and now Wesley plays queen to e2. Queen to e3 was uh, uh, much, much safer, but Wesley goes for queen to e2, and now Levon plays queen captures on f4, e7, challenging the rook here, and now queen to d4 with check. We have king to h1, and now queen captures on c3. So he picks up the rook on c3, and now what can Wesley play? If you play e captures on f8, and uh, okay, bring a queen into the game, we're going to capture with a king, and there's really no good way to continue this with white. Black is just better and pretty much completely winning. If let's say queen f2 check, you can easily block with the rook, and then you are really in trouble. So what Levon does is he brings uh, another queen into the game. And this is now move 30, and we already have three queens on the board. And of course, uh, um, Levon can't just pick this up because queen capture sunny 8 will be checkmate. So what can Levon play here? Uh, well, he starts with rook to f6. Uh, puts more pressure along the f-file because you can see the bishop guarding f1 and both of the rooks now eyeing that f1 square. If white isn't careful, uh, uh, a nice checkmate might be in order. So here we have r uh, queen back to e4. Uh, getting the queen out of harm's way because now the, the rook is on f6, so you could capture the queen and defend checkmate with this rook. But now uh, here, queen captures on h7 is being threatened. So uh, it seems like Wesley uh, came up on top, uh, you know, of all of this mess. But queen to a1 with check, and now you can't block with uh, anything like this because if knight f1, we can just capture this. Queen captures on f1, and after queen captures, rook captures on f1 will be checkmate. So instead, after queen to a1, we have bishop to b1. Again, Again, uh, preventing, uh, blocking check while still threatening queen captures on h7. And is there anything left for Levon to do here? Well, he will defend checkmate with g6. And now 
uh, well, uh, at the end of the day, it's Wesley who has the two queens, and we already said that queen is worth uh, 10 points or maybe 9.5, so uh, he's definitely up in material. Uh, but here we have queen to e1, uh, a very nice move. Now the bishop can also also move. Uh, but now queen b2, Levon now threatens, um, uh, well, he keeps an eye on the, on, the b, on the g2 square, and you have to be uh, very, very careful of what you do. Uh, and best way uh, to do this is, uh, well, there just is no good way. If you play something like queen back here, you, we're going to capture, and after queen captures again, rook to f1 will result in checkmate. Not in checkmate, but for example, after rook captures, queen captures, and bishop captures, this is now a completely winning endgame for, for Levon. He's up pawn, and also white's position is very, very passive. The, the pawn here is attacked. You're going to have to play bishop to a2 to defend it. And uh, now white's bishop is very passive, and you're just going to start bringing your king into the game, put a, a king on e5, uh, start pushing the pawns, create a fast pawn here, and uh, white will be unable to um, uh, stop all of this. Plus, uh, these pawns are on dark square, so white really doesn't have any targets for the bishop. Uh, so after queen to b2, bishop to d3 was played. Now it seems like, okay, we added another uh, piece to guard the f1 square, and now we have rook to f4. Uh, rook to f3 was even better, but, uh, you know, it's a rapid game. The, these guys really don't have all that much time. Rook to f4 was played, uh, and now Wesley gets this uh, queen to e2 move. Now he offers a queen trade, and Levon goes back, queen to f6. So he puts uh, all the pressure he has on that f1 square, and Wesley is defending that f1 square with everything he has. Uh, and here, uh, the position is actually uh, equal, uh, but Wesley has to spot queen e7. After queen e7, uh, for example, you're going to go queen back to b2, you're going to threaten checkmate, and we're just going to repeat queen to e2, where now, okay, Lemon can either repeat, or he can play uh, queen captures on a3, and only then king to g1, and now, okay, the game continues. However, after queen to f6 by Levon, Wesley played the immediate king to g1, and this will simply not do. This allows Levon to perform a beautiful, beautiful combination, uh, queen to d4 with check and okay it doesn't look like much we're just gonna uh, block this we have queen to e3 and now uh, there is only one move that wins the game for Levon and it is the one move that Wesley missed uh, so feel free to pause the video and try to find the winning idea for Levon uh, while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that the queen on e3 uh, can't really move as, uh, well, it's pinned. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is rook to e8. That's correct. We pile up on the white queen and it was in this position on move 37 that uh, Wesley so resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. It's a beautiful, beautiful position where anything Wesley does results in a, in a very, very uh, abrupt checkmate. So just to give you uh, an example, if queen captures on d4, we're going to play rook captures on e1. And now you have to block bishop to f1, we're going to play rook captures on f1, knight captures and the rook captures on f1 will be checkmate. Uh, so there's that. And on the other hand, if you don't capture the queen, well, what do you do? Uh, because we are just threatening to win all the queens here and then checkmate the white king. So you might play something like knight to f1. Uh, but now pretty much anything is winning for Levon. We can play rook captures on f1, and after bishop, uh, sorry, after bishop captures on f1, we're going to play rook captures on e3. So now we're threatening all sorts of nasty discoveries um, uh, via the queen on d4. We just move the rook, and if queen to f2, it seems like Wesley again has defended successfully. But now comes the absolute shocker: rook to e1. I mean, wow. <laughs> Uh, so the threat is rook captures on f1, uh, this will be checkmate, and there is nothing Wesley can do about this. Of course, the queen will not be able to capture back, the queen is pinned by the queen on d4, and again, if you capture the queen on d4, then rook captures on d1 is again checkmate. So brilliant, brilliant stuff. Both of them played extremely well. Uh, Wesley uh, bounced back from some very, very uh, difficult positions, and he even got a beautiful pass pawn. He got a second queen into the game. He got to keep the second queen, uh, but it simply wasn't enough. So here, uh, just another game that uh, really shows you that even though we uh, sometimes attribute value to, to pieces and pawns like uh, you know one, three, three, a three, and a third, five, or maybe nine and a half or a ten for a queen, uh, this is all. Uh, the, 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 this should always be uh, viewed as a, as a potential, not as an actual uh, strength of, of a piece throughout the entire game. So while your queen can be worth 10 points, it can also be worth 1 or, or 0 points, as you've seen in this game.
Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, thank you always for su uh, suggesting such wonderful games. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Andrew Dabrowski, Kirsten Lemans, uh, Guy Lefleur Scores, uh, DK Benjamin, and Marka Galassi for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions, such as this one, and whatever else happens uh, in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.